Okay, with that interlude, um, yesterday we had uh, built up a model which exhibited some basic features of ABS. Heterogeneity, um, the ability to capture heterogeneity both in terms of attributes, parameters, things like age, income, um, sex, et cetera, on the one hand, and uh, on the other, uh, in respect to processes. And so we could have, for example, heterogeneity with respect to not just one, but multiple health conditions or behavioral factors like smoking, et cetera. Um, we also saw how in a model like this, we could uh, readily probe aspects of individual evolution. We saw particular individuals evolving over time, but we didn't really take advantage of that in terms of the statistics, et cetera. Um, we did capture some cross-sectional statistics in the population, and we saw how we could compute statistics over the entire population that were based on the characteristics of individuals in that population. Um, and there were a bunch of other things that were rather platform specific, like we saw we could declaratively color or, or have appearance of individuals by, by status and so on. So by the end of the day tomorrow, we had lots to be proud of. In fact, we, we stood on and we achieved greatness in the late afternoon. You may recall that before your dinner. Um, but today we have a lot more exciting business to, to address. Specifically, we're going to move beyond those aspects we've covered already with, um, with agent-based modeling features, things like heterogeneity and, and ability to capture multiple dimensions of processes to, to capture some additional features. Number one, the all important component of inter-agent interactions. And we're going to capture that in a way that dovetails with our state parts. To wit, through agents that communicate with each other via messages. And we'll see how messages provide this kind of general mechanism for agent agent interaction that can handle spread of pathogen, but it can also handle spread of norms, spread of ideas, uh, memes, um, uh, knowledge, attitudes, beliefs with respect to health, and lots of other factors, spread of innovation. So these sorts of messages we'll be exploring will travel over networks, and we'll introduce our first few networks this afternoon. Um, we will also use this as an opportunity to build on that observation we had yesterday that we could follow individuals over time, longitudinally at an individual level. And specifically, we will accumulate statistics about their evolution at a longitudinal level, okay? Um, so uh, as time allows, we'll also do some things that are more any logic specific, like show how we can create histograms and how we can create visualizations, et cetera. But, um, but for now, you know, in terms of the broad features of ABMs, what I've emphasized is, is the main core. Um, and those are observations which will carry over to any of the ABM platforms that, um, that, are, that are extant. Okay, so with that said, I will now switch to uh, a mode of presentation for any logic. So if you don't have your any logics fired up, please do so now and we can get started. Boom. Okay, can the folks online see my see my screen? Can anyone make an utterance in the chat? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the enthusiastic utterance, moreover. Thanks. Um, okay, so we're going to close this model out um, and we're gonna start other models. I'm going to say close all, a boom, and it'll ask me, do I really wanna save this? Yeah, by the way, that's saved away to the site um, yesterday, those successive versions of it and in the final version. Oh, look at that. Okay, ain't that interesting, Wade. Um, um, so I've seen this before. And, um, and it's just, it's, a, it's an interesting observation. Okay, great. Um, 
So I'm going to say file new. I'm going to create a model. There we go. And what is this model going to be? Um, it's going to be a um, uh, first um, um, interacting. Maybe I'll I'll call it interacting agents. Um, interacting uh, interacting agents. V one. Okay. And I will aspire to post these. Now, mind you, the model time units. Um, and we're going to make it days. So one is going to be one day if we're asked for how long something takes or the duration that they spend dwelling in a certain state before they recover, it'll be one day. Okay, awesome. Great. Um, okay, so um, yes, question. Oh, okay, yeah, I can, I can engage in zooming behavior. Um, so there we go. Okay, very good. Um, okay, I'm gonna take a show of hands though, actually. Um, uh, so I, would, I, I had a plan to show you an SIR uh, type model where we have people interacting, sending each other messages and keep track of the number of times they've been infected. Um, but um, the truth is um, there's a lot more repertoire uh to um uh, to, to sort of uh sending messages and influence each other than there is um uh, just in the matter of um uh in 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 the area of sort of infectious disease we can have um sort of changes uh in in people's interactions for example um uh that are that are coupled um and what I'm wondering is uh, if people uh, would be interested in seeing some interactions in other areas besides, uh, besides infectious disease. How many people are interested in infectious disease interactions? Seeing that. Okay, how many people would prefer something other than infectious diseases? Okay, okay. Um, I appreciate the, the feedback here. Um, let me uh, contemplate for uh, a move uh, for a moment, and I'm going to envision a model in my head, okay, um, and see if I could roll something out for you. So one idea would be to to take the model we built yesterday, the the smoking model, and elaborate that with peer influence, and have influence of smokers on risk of initiation of, of smoking um, and do so with within networks. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? What do you think? Is, can we do that? Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, let's let it be. Now, I gotta tell you, this is totally spontaneous. I built that model yesterday spontaneously and this is gonna be spontaneous, okay? So, so, you know, caveat emptor, I have a colleague, a very prominent colleague in agent-based modeling. He tells me his philosophy with respect to agent-based modeling is never, ever, ever run an agent-based model live in front of anyone. He said, it will almost certainly go wrong. And I, I said, oh. um, I said, um, I won't mention the name. You know, I think it's very rare I don't run a model in front of someone. And moreover, very commonly, I build models live in front of people um, and, and run them. And that was just like so out of his world, he couldn't believe it. Um, but we're going to the edge here, okay? Um, and we'll, I'll go to, the, go to the edge for you, okay? Let's, let's give it a try. What the heck? So let's take that model from yesterday and let's build on it. I'm all fired up, okay? Let's go for it. So we're going to we're going to load in that model we just closed, but loading in and by the way, you can go find it right it's all posted in the models built in class so if anyone wants to start with my model they're welcome to do so. So here we are, and you may recall. Um, we have this model here with heart disease and our smokers and now we're going to add in. 
affiliative behavior and interactions between smokers. Um, okay, awesome. I, I appreciate the feedback online as well. Uh, so we built this up, but this model was bereft of networks and interaction. Let's add those in. So I am going to save these things. I'm going to say file save. And um, I'm going to say tobacco use social. Yeah. Okay. Social tobacco use. Sounds better like social tobacco use. Okay. Um, there we go. There we go. Social tobacco use. Now it's version one social tobacco use. I forked it. And then now we have a separate project. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is uh, work towards a situation where agents influence each other with respect to smoking behavior, the propensity to smoke, to quit, et cetera. This is going to be really interesting. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is find a way for them to communicate with each other. And there's several mechanisms you could use. You could have agents send messages nearby them in space to communicate with each other, or they can be in networks next to each other, or you could communicate all agents within a certain, um, a certain defined place like a, like a home or workplace communicate with each other. These are all readily done. I'm going to show you the network method. If later there's interest, I could do it so all agents in the same home influence each other, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and uh, some of um, what Wade shows later um, may clue you in a little bit as to how these kind of institutional contexts would work. Okay, so we're going to add in a network. Okay, um, and uh, this is going to be uh, something which. I'm going to teach you a general way to add in networks to these models. So we're going to go over to main. And you'll notice if you go down main, um, uh, there's uh, within main agent type, there's a thing called space and networks. Um, we actually frobbed it yesterday to lay people out in, in sort of random places. Do you remember that? Um, layout type random. And that laid, led them to be sort of Splayed around, right? Um, we're going to add in one of the predefined networks for any logic. Oh, can I send the file path? Um, you did. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Um, uh, that is amazing. Um, so you notice here that there's a network type. Do you see that? Okay. So we're going to add in a distance-based network. We're going to impose would be a better word for it, a distance-based network, okay? And you'll notice when it's a distance-based network, people are connected who are close together. If there's interest, we can examine scale-free networks and small world networks, et cetera. I'd be glad if, if that's an interest to do that. But with a distance-based network, two people are connected if and only if they lie within a certain distance of each other in 2D space, okay? And the distance here is specified as 50, and the distance metric can be found by scrolling up and seeing that, you know, this indicates 10 meters. And by the way, you can go change this and make this, you know, 100 meters, for example, um, instead of 10, if you wish to do so, okay? So just be aware there's kind of a, a unit of distance, which is shown here in the model. And I'm gonna change this to be hundred meters too. Um, there, we, there we go. Okay. I changed it in main, I changed it in person so that they're consistent, which is generally what you Okay. So in main, you, you have this distance-based network with a connection distance of 50. Okay, now let us ladies and gentlemen, um, do something um, which is going to be visually communicate um, the number of connections that someone has, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be able to see the number of connections that someone has. In other words, what's called in social network analysis, their degree, okay? So let's go, let's go do that. If I wanted to make a person's appearance depend on their degree, where do you think I'd look in this model? In the scenario? In Maine or somewhere else? 
where would I look if I wanted to change their appearance? What are people's appearances right now? They're, yeah, and what do they look like? They look like a circle, right? It's, it's rather undistinguished, although well-rounded personalities. Um, so we're gonna make the radius of their circle depend on the number of connections that they have. Can we do this? I'm doing this to teach a lesson too. I'm, I'm kind of being sly in this. Okay, so we're gonna click not, oh no, look where I clicked. What's wrong here? What's the picture? I was gonna go frob that circle, but I don't wanna frob that circle. I'm in Maine, darn right I'm in Maine. Um, whether I'm in Bangor or, or you know uh, Augusta, I'm not gonna say, but, um, or Brunswick, but um, I'm gonna go to person. I really wanna be in person, okay? Um, and for position and size, I'm going to go there. Now, <clears throat> building strengths, what do you think I need to do to make their radius depend on the number of connections a person has? What, what, what element here do I need to rob? Yeah, the radius there, exactly, sorry. Yeah, hitting all the, the points, exactly right, exactly right. So I change it to dynamic. That's what that's this little thing here is, right? And by so doing, I can put a formula now. By the way, Java is called an expression, but you put a formula. Um, no semicolons here, it's computing a value, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm gonna ask for my connections number, okay? Now we're big boys and girls. So I'm going to, I'm going to say here, this dot get connections number, okay? Um, and, get connections number. I, I'm pressing control space in, and Wade will state in a stentorian voice, the appropriate key to place to press on a map. Option, option space. Um, yeah. Um, a snowball network. Yeah, we could do actually snowball, um, something along snowball networks or the ideas from responsive sampling. Um, uh, in a model, if, if people are interested in um, uh, in different types of network structures, it can pose. We can also impose custom network structures in any logic, such as might be drawn from a PIEC file or from you know social network analysis data. We have code that will do that. Example models that would do that. If people are interested, I could show them. Okay, so I said this dot get connections number, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share that on. The big screen. Let's see if the big screen is still around. There it is. There it is. It stands before us. There we go. This. So I'm asking for my connection number. This again. You kind of imagine it like an apostrophe. My get connection number. It's asking for my connections. Okay. Okay. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, it's probably not exactly what we want. We probably want something like. Um, several times this. Uh, and we probably want at least a radius of, of 1.0. So I'm gonna say 1.0 plus, what the heck, four times this. I'm living close from the edge, folks, for you. There we go. I, I said this, boom, 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 like that. Because I want it at least to be a radius of, of one for all cases, even if they don't have any friends. And based on the number of friends, each friend should grow it by four, not, not by one. We'll see what it looks like. I actually don't have a good sense of what it would, should need to be, but let's, let's go run it. May we? Okay. Um, okay, there we go. Something like that. And if you think of Christmas, you could be excused. Okay. So who are the big ones? Those connected with many people, right? Um, and not surprisingly, they come in clusters, right? They come in groups because they're connected with each other. So they have lots of connections. But where's the network? The network is, in, is, is there. You can tell it. I mean, they have different numbers of connections, but the network's hidden. And let me show you how to make it unhidden. This is kind of uh, in any logic thing. Um, this notion of putting people in networks, affiliative networks, I mean, that cuts across 
many, many um, agent-based platforms, of course, and it's, it's quite central to the modern practice of, of agent-based modeling. And it dovetails beautifully with social network analysis. But we want to see the network in any logic. How do we do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to person, <clears throat> by the way, you got to watch out. If you have multiple models open, as I do here, um, I really, I really got to be careful which of these is for which model, okay? Because you can get confused and start putting things into another model. So it's best in general if you close the models you're not working on right now to avoid getting confused, okay? But in person for this model, you'll notice that up here in the upper left, there's a thing called connections. Do you see it? Who needs help? You see that in the upper left? Connections? C or not? C. Okay, great. Um, so if you click on connections, this is actually where you can add support for agents being in networks. Okay. By default, they can be in a kind of initial network. And this initial network has kind of um, a little bit of, of extra kind of um, built-in support. So if you don't mention a network, it will use that. But you can actually add in other networks. I won't, I won't actually do it here, although we could in other exercises if there were demand. But you'll notice that if you go to the agent palette, remember the palette is where we get things to add to the model. There's a link to agents and you can add these in. So maybe you'd, what, tell me, what sort of, what, what, how is it that a person might be in more than one network? Could, could you give an indication of, of a couple types of networks a person might be in, for example, simultaneously? Family networks and friends now. Maybe there's a social network that they're in electronically that doesn't attend on proximity, but family and friend contacts with them might, might depend more on, on physical proximity. And they might have other collegial networks, right? Of, of, of workplace networks, uh, networks associated with certain type of risk behavior, sexual networks or needle sharing networks, um, uh, support networks, et cetera. So you can have many types of networks and there's really no problem doing that. You, you'll just start to be quite specific. Which network are you dealing with at any one time when you're, when you're um, sending messages or what have you? But for now, we're going to be dealing with this connections network, okay? And that's built into each person. Now, if we if we click on that, um, you'll notice that there's a couple things we can change, and, and these are worth knowing about. You'll notice that you can actually choose messages coming in with the network to what state chart should they be routed, okay? Um, generally. You, you don't change this, but sometimes you want to change it. You can also go and kind of spy on the networks. Like when a message comes in, you can do something like print it, print out a message to yourself, like a, a bit of, of reporting, or you know, record that to a database, uh, show some special sign in the in the uh, visualization. That's often handy. So if you're debugging a model, trying to figure out why there's a problem with the model, often you know, having a printout, this person got a message is kind of useful. And you can do that there. There's other places you can do it, but this is the most kind of closest to, to where it's coming in. And there's a question, can we have changing networks? And the answer is absolutely. You know, the networks can change very readily over time. You can add connections in and delete uh, connections between two parties. Absolutely. And you can build up your own custom networks. But the thing I want to emphasize is down in animation, there's a draw line between connecting agents. Do you see that? And that's what you really want to enable a visual network. Are we okay with this? So what did I do? Where am I? Um, I am not Terry Lingle. Um, I, am, I, am, I am in this, uh, I'm in this room, yes. Um, and I'm in person. Uh, I had gone to connections here. I'd gone down to communication just to show that to you. I didn't change anything, but I really wanted to, to put a check mark for this line between connecting agents. 
Is that okay? Okay, Terry too would be proud. Okay, um, okay, great. So we're going to now run the model again. I would build it. Remember, build early, build often. The build completed successfully. The model is a happy camper. And we're going to right click on simulation and choose run. And now we will see a sight, ladies and gentlemen, of beauty, a sight of delight, um, which shows a network connecting the agents. And those agents with many connections are not surprisingly tend to have a bunch of connections. Now, I, I'm gonna just show you a little thing that's sometimes helpful. You notice the agents are occluding the, um, the lines to them. So uh, what we wanna do is actually draw the line in front of the agent sometimes. So you'll notice that if you go back there in animation, you can say draw on top of agents, okay? And by so doing, you can now draw the line right atop uh, the agents, okay? And you will, you will see that. And you, know, you can choose by your preferences, which you'd like, but sometimes it's useful for debugging to figure out like, hey, does this guy really have a bunch of connections or, or this gal? And to whom are they located? You can do it by putting those connections you know, front and center. Are we okay with that? Okay, okay. Um, so anyone need help here? Fifty five zero. And then you change the scale. I didn't not change. So like, how do you change the circles? Um. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I use this formula for their. Oh, sorry. This formula for their size. Um, you mean the the the? Well, that was for their um, that was for the uh, radius the of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so um, might want to ask what the radius uh, is of them. Um, they said it was actually like you said. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a teaching opportunity. Um, we, um, and sometimes it's very useful to see how I react to, you know, things gone bad, okay? And um, good models can go bad sometimes. And, um, and it can happen to, to any modeler. So let's, let's go talk about this. So what I would do, so my, if, if, if you wanna know how I'd resolve that, Larissa, I would have it, um, I would have it basically uh, print out when each agent starts their state chart here. Um, I'd probably do it right here in the action. I would say, have it print out the uh, radius of the person. Well, I have two hypotheses. Ladies and gentlemen, when you figure out a problem with a model, this is true when you figure out a problem with a program, you, you develop a hypothesis for what's going wrong. And I have two separate hypotheses that are dominant right now, Larita. One hypothesis, it's just a viewing issue. She's viewing at a different magnification. It's just a matter of scale. The other is that actually um, there's something wrong with the size and how I go about those will be different or fixing those. So I would, in one of these state charts, it's already there. I would put for action, I would do, I would print out the radius. How do I print out the radius? I say trace LN, my radius uh, is, and I would put this dot um, get, uh, sorry, it's not this. It'll be, it'll be the name of this thing. What is this thing? It's, uh, it's called the oval, oval dot get, and I think it's like get width or something like that. Oval dot get, uh, get, uh, get line width, get radius X. That's, that's what I would do like that. That's what I would do. I would, I would print it out and I would see, okay, what's the value? Let's, let's run this. Let's go see what happens if I put this. I'm gonna put it into the, I'm putting it into the chat there. There we go. Um, I am going to run it. 
and I'm going to see what happens. There we go. Um, you notice by so doing, notice they're all printing out this, eh? Oh, look at that. Oh, no, that ain't that something. Ain't that something. Um, so that actually got applied before it got resized. Okay, so 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 that that's not what I would have expected, but that's fine. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna instead do it when they end up in this state because apparently this is applied before the the uh, radius is updated. So I'm gonna put it here. There we go. Boom, and I will run it there, and I will put it so as soon as they enter this healthy heart state it's going to report their radius. And let's try that. Oh, it still says 10. Okay, so something is funky. I'm wondering. Um, okay, uh, so uh, this would be there. I would expect it to be reflected in radius X, but it's not, it's not reflecting it. So I'm wondering if there's a get radius that's separate. Get get radius. I don't want to get into this too much, but um, guess radius X, get radius Y. Okay. So um, anyway, ask her what that turns, turns out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so did, did she put it in this state? I'm gonna probably need to move on, but um, she can also get my model if she wants. Um, why don't I go post my model and she can fall back to that. Um, it would be much easier to debug if she were here in person, obviously. Um, but let's let's go post, uh, let me go post this model. So where is my posting window? Um, uh, okay, here we go. And boom. Um, and so I'm going to put it in models built in class. And here we go. Boom. Um, models uh, mumble. Uh, tobacco use simple. No, no, no. It's not that. It's social tobacco use. Boom. Okay. Posted. So if she wants to grab that, she can do that. Okay. Um, so let's continue on. Uh, so we have this model with networks, but those networks are simple. They're simply affecting people's um, appearance right now. We want them to affect something more foundational. Um, we want them to serve as conduits of transmission. So what we're going to do here is have people interact via networks, okay? And, um, our primary focus for this is going to be on initiation initially. In other words, it's going to be on the process of, of smoking um, uptake by people. So I've just grabbed this initiation. Um, by the way, I'm going to save this as version two now because I'm going to be working on that. I don't want to overwrite version one. So I have an initiation uh, component here, which is kind of based on a hazard rate. But now what I want to do is I actually want to have um, this be something which is further enhanced or elevated, would be a better word, by the presence of smoking around me in the network. Now, the most um, th there's two ways this can be done. One is by messages, and the other is for me to say what fraction of my friends smoke and basically use that, okay? We could do either one. Um, I think initially I'll introduce you to messages, okay? And then we may end up experimenting with the other. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to have some endogenous initiation. So that would be sort of a person of their own volition becomes a smoker. Um, and maybe I'll make this 0 
0.002 per year. So it's a very small number that become a smoker um, uh, per, on a per year basis. It's a small chance. What I'm going to do though, is have another transition from here to here, which is comes about as a result of peer interactions. So, you know, an unsmoking kid um, sees one of his buddies smoking and, and is talking to the buddy and the buddy offers him a smoke. Um, or, you know, uh, a couple of his buddies are smoking together with him and they're hanging out and, and the other kid, you know, um, takes one of the cancer sticks. So, so in the palette, we're going to add in another transition here, which is going to be peer driven initiation. Okay, here we go. Um, peer driven initiation. And peer driven initiation will not be a timeout, it won't be a rate. It won't be a message. It'll be based on, sorry, it won't be a, a, a rate. It'll, it won't be a condition. It'll be based on a message, okay? About being sent a message, which basically says I'm pressuring you or I'm you know, encouraging you, I'm influencing you, okay? Um, so this person is going to be subject to these messages which are gonna encourage them to uptake smoking. Now, right now I'm gonna say unconditional. We'll come back to that because soon enough, we're gonna have multiple types of messages. People are gonna influence each other with respect to cessation and relapse in different ways. But for now, we're gonna put this in. We're gonna have a theory of kind of influence. We'll just have one message right now, okay? Are we okay with that? Now, further to our comments just there, I'm going to put in a message. I'm going to put in an action here, which is going to say, well, okay, we'll come back to that. Um, I'll, I'll motivate that in just a moment. But if this is what we have as a notion that a person's going to go from here based on pure influence, what's missing? There's one key ingredient missing. What is that? So this is the reception side of the message person can be influenced. If they if that message is reached by someone who's in the never smoker state, they may start smoking. But what's missing? That's the reception side of the message. What's absent? The sender. Who's the sender? Who's the influencer? Who's the one who will be, you know, um, engaged in in pressuring this kid to start smoking? It's the current smoker. Yeah. So let's go Let's go add in something to the current smoker. And if you can see a method to my madness, this is not all that different from pathogen transmission, right? Uh, or from transmission of norms, I would add. Um, so I'm going to add in to the current smoker a self transition. See that? I added in a self transition. Maybe I'll zoom in. I think I. I think in switching models, I zoomed out. Here we are. Um, and so I, for, for those at the back, I'm going to add in, I just added in this. By the way, what if it were like, uh, come on, I, I, I wanna show dysfunction, but it's just, um, it's just um, not letting me show dysfunction. What if it had been like, okay, I'm having trouble forcing it, but these two are green because it's connected and that's what you want. So this is a self transition. And I'm gonna tell you a, a dirty secret about end life, okay? I'm gonna tell you a, something that I don't really like. I, it's actually not that bad. It's not really a dirty secret. It's just kind of a weird thing about it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it actually is different if it's inside the state versus if it loops out and comes back in. If it loops back and come back in, you actually leave the state and you come back in. If you if it's inside, you don't leave it. You're just staying in that state, okay? And remaining in it. And while you remain in that state, this thing happens. Um, and that's what we want. We don't want someone just quit being a smoker and, and 
and only then come back in. Okay, um, so um, we're going to call this peer pressure um, or exerting peer pressure, exerting peer pressure. Um, uh, there we go. Okay, boom. Excellent. Um, and we're going to have it triggered as a rate transition. And oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at this. Remember, we started that other model and I said, let's choose the time unit of day, which is convenient for the phenomenon we were care of. But now I'm building on this model. The time unit I had chosen before was guess what? Yeah, okay, so no problem. I will simply say this rate it's not going to go off on a per year basis. It's going to go off on a per day basis. But they remain as constant. I can do that. I can I can say interpret this number as per day or per hour or what have you. I'm going to say per day on average. It, maybe it's three times per day. So I'll say fine. Three three times per day. Okay. They're going to influence their bodies once every eight hours. And what are they going to do to influence their bodies? If this is the, the sending side of things, what do they need to do? They need to what? Begins with S, send a message, send a message. Sometimes with my students in my undergrad class, I like to play hangman um, and, and get them. <laughs> Larissa knows the story. So I, I got to tell you folks this story. Um, my, my colleague, Jack McDonald, we know the story. Um, so, um, when I was young, I wore a younger man's shoes, and I, uh, I started my programming journey, um, I think when I was about eight years old, maybe seven, um, uh, it was the 1970s, um, and I started actually on a calculator, the program was something, but anyway, I, um, uh, I heard that there was going to be a computer class um, in a in a high school, the Pounds High School. They were going to have a computer class open to the public that you could go take. And I think it was aimed um, at people like in a continuing education sense or something because um, uh, it was it had a, a formal component. It had an exam and and, and assignments. So anyway, it's all exciting and. Um, my, my family enrolled me in this. I remember going into the high school. You know, like a little kid. I was all scared because I saw like saw these hunched over figures doing welding and so on. I thought, like, oh man, this is where the big boys are or something like that. Anyway, so we went in and and I went to this computer class and I was I, I was surrounded by by people like you know five times six times, seven times my age. <laughs> and I was, I was this little kid. And, and the, I remember the instructor was really old. He looked like 50 or something. Um, I don't know, you know, these days he's young. Um, so uh, anyway, I, he, he, he sort of tolerated my presence and so on. And I, I sort of communed with the, the computers there, the BB-11, by the way, one of those computers out there in the computer museum area to go up there. <laughs> One of those those ones. Um, so anyway, I was I was learning it, but you know it wasn't all fun and games because he said there was going to be a quiz coming up. One, uh oh, <laughs> you know I've just been like interacting with these computers. I wasn't really paying attention, and um, he said there's going to be a quiz next week. I, I said okay, I've got to pay attention now. What are you saying? And um, and so he said, but we're going to have a review set. That's great. So I went to the review section, and he, he was reviewing material from the class. And his style was to go through and to, to try to get people to learn, he would call on people and ask them for the, the answer. So he was going through the class, and he said, suppose I wanted to have something which would you know, um, uh, go through each number from um, one to a hundred, and it would print out, 
you know, 10 times that number or 10 out. I don't know if he said the square of the number. I wouldn't have known what it was. Um, maybe he said the square of the number, the number of times it's solved. He said, how would I do that? And he looked at me. A little more fancy than that. He looked at me. And I just like looked at him. He said, tell you what, I'll give you a hint. He said, it has an L, two O's, and a P. And I looked at him and I said, cool? <laughs> Can you not? This is this is a real thing. I think mean, yeah, no, just he he found that really really funny. Um, so uh, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not dyslexic, but um, could be. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, looped, loop. I tell you, loop. Okay. Um, back to this. So we have um, we have this uh loop that that a current smoker will be in, right? They'll periodically they'll be undertaking something and they'll be sending a message, you know, S-E-N-D, right? Um, not dense. Um, so, so we're going to, in the action, do something. This, 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 this uh, transition will invoke an action, okay? And what that action is, is that action going to be, okay? Um, we're going to, to send this message um, and how am I going to do this? Well, who's going to send the message? I'll I'll say this dot. I'm going to send the message. I'm the, the agent, so it's this. Okay. Um, and uh, there's actually two ways we can do it. One is with send, and send is is something that will send the message, and whenever the 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 other party receives it. They'll sit in a queue and then they'll handle it. And that's the normal way to do it. There's another one called deliver, which is like directly goes to it. So we have a choice here. And we're going to choose send to, we could choose send to random neighbor, or we could send to all neighbors. Sort of, I'm influencing all my friends three times a day that I'm a smoker. That's when I go out and, and hang out you know, with, with the other kids who are smoking. So I'm gonna say, send to all neighbors, okay? Um, I, I influence all my neighbors, okay. And I'm gonna send a message that says like, um, um, what, what should it say? Like, um, uh, you know, start smoking, I like that. start, Smoking exclamation point and notice they put in double quotes. Double quotes are not just two single quotes; they're they're double quotes. That that's what we use for what's called a string. It's a sequence of characters. So I'm going to put this in the in, in this uh, thing here. Okay, send to all neighbors. Boom, start smoking. So I'm going to influence all my neighbors. They're going to know. Hey, there was a smoker. Maybe I should be a smoker. Oh, huh? yes, yeah, young. Um, send to all neighbors would be. Oh, actually, yes, you're right. Mumble. Um, yeah, there's there's actually. Um, so I'll I'll use that to teach something. Um, send to. Um, you can actually do send to connected here. Um. Or you can do send to all neighbors, or you could do send to random connected or random neighbors. So you're absolutely right. Neighbors is actually in space. Connected is actually in, in, in the uh, networks. So you're absolutely right. This should be send to all connected. That's all my connected buddies, okay? And I'll send start smoking. So thank you, Vyong, uh, for for catching that. This is one of the things when you do it live, then sometimes screw up. Okay. So we'll see connection and space later. Um, okay. So I'm sending it to all my connected um, parties in the network. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, this is how it starts. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I run this? What do you think would happen? If this were a theory, so I can build it, 
boom. And I could run it. What do you think is going to happen? Well, this is the receiving side. So if they're never a smoker, if they get the message, they are definitely going to the current smoker. Hmm? Yeah, we're going to have a bunch of people current smokers. So I'm going to build and I'm going to run it. Okay? There we go. Um, and, and there we go. That's a kind of depressing thing. What happened? What happened there? Peer pressure worked. Um, so uh, yeah, we, um, uh, we, we just saw it go super, super quickly, right? Um, so I, if I say run again here and it comes up, um, it almost you know, immediately spreads. Mind you, if we had gone and you can actually set it, um, uh, here and uh, I, I think there should be a way here to actually set it to not run in in virtual mode from the very start. And Wade, you should you might remember this. Do you remember that model time? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to run in, but it says real time mode. So I guess it just goes so quickly that it's that it you know it overwhelms it basically. They they all immediately. Turn down the scale, like the time unit is years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I could turn down the scale. Quite right. Time unit is, is years. So I could do it like one five hundredth of a year. But even so, like all the smokers are in one unit can ascend to their immediate neighbors. But yes, this starts to bring it out. Good, good call, Wade. Um, so now we have some people not yet infected. How did I do that? Um, with Wade's August guidance, um, I went to simulation, I went to time, and actually it was in, it wasn't virtual time be as fast as possible, but it was real time already, but Wade pointed out the time scale is years. So it was, it was doing it sort of fairly quickly anyway. It's not that that's the time step, it's just um, it, it was doing it at a pace that that is sort of measured in years. and. Um, and so I set it to be one five hundredth of a year. And so now it's kind of running slow enough that I can actually see initially people aren't infected. So what do you think is going to happen if I if I move this forward a little bit? What do you think is going to happen? Like these these folks are next to a, a former smoker, uh, right? And like former smokers. So they're not infect they're not are they going to get infected by this meme right now? Are they going to start smoking right now? Not immediately, but what's going to happen in the fullness of time? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you start to see these systems effects come in. And if I if I kind of went and um and you know, place this through. This this is actually probably not so effective right now. You can see time going up a little bit in the the upper right and so on. But eventually, some of those will relapse. Um, maybe I'll 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 just run this here. You can see, okay, the creeping hegemony. Eventually, one of these is going to flip back, probably down here, for example, or one or this one will, or this one will, and it will start to you know, reclaim these holdouts, right? So you can kind of see the creeping horror. There it went, there it went. This one isn't yet relapsed, but in the fullness of time, you know, that will to be conquered. And this one will eventually relapse too. And and now we're dealing with a very grim situation. Why haven't these been, been infected yet by this meme? Why haven't they started to smoke? They have no connections to others. Yes, uh, Nostrum. Sorry? This one? Yep. Oh, oh, you mean like up here? Um, no, I didn't change it. I mean, I mean like here in the connection? Yeah. 
That's correct, yeah. Oh, no, no, there's no predictive message I'm looking for right now. I said that we wouldn't do that at first, that we'll do that later. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we see peer effects can be big. And obviously, this is an exaggerated situation. Suppose we wanted to build resilience training among kids. Wait, yeah. So your question on the... Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So... This is kind of a terminology thing, but the basic idea of it is um, within, within Azure-based modeling in general, we have a key notion of agent-agent uh, -agent interactions being, you know, be, being a really central theme within Azure-based modeling. And um, the Agent, agent interactions are mediated by different environments. In many models, uh, they're mediated by networked environments, um, environments with networks. Um, so it's networks that are the, the mediating factors linking up agents. But there are other times where they're mediated by spatial environments, by agents being proximate to each other in space in some more direct sense. And um, Within any logic, you can uh, you can have agents communicating with neighbors in a networked sense. That's send to all connected. You could also have them communicating with neighbors in space, um, and that would be send to all neighbors. Okay, um, both of them are are viable situations. But where we have neighbors in space. It's specifically in the context of what are known as discrete spatial environments. And we'll be talking about this. Any logic supports several different spatial environments. Three of them of particular note are continuous space. We actually see that here. Geographic space, we'll be exploring that tomorrow. Be sure to bring your mice. And thirdly, discrete space. And in a discrete space environment, space is divided up into patches or grid cells, which completely cover, that is tessellate the space. And um, agents communicate across these grid cells, okay? And um, they do so with that, like send to connected, to, to all neighbors. So neighbors, confusingly because of its use in social network analysis to refer to neighbors and, and networks. Um, neighbors here is referring to spatial neighbors. So if one is in one grid cell and another is in another grid cell, it'll communicate with those neighboring grid cells. And this is very common um, for what are called cellular automata um, uh, within any logic. Uh, the shelling segregation model is an example of a of a cellular automata, um, although it doesn't include direct agent to agent uh, communication in that way. But there's others that are included, like I think the predator prey uh, agent based in any logic is in a discrete environment where you have lynxes and hares who are in cells or patches in this sort of environment, and you can see them you know, interacting with each other in this environment um, uh, by kind of moving around in the environment. So this is a gridded environment where a given um, lynx and hare, uh, if they approximate, then they interact. And so sometimes we, we, um, uh, we sort of bring up um, uh, agents into this environment and then we have them interact um, with each other with neighbors in space. And that will be sent to all, all neighbors. Okay. So neighbors refers to spatial neighbors in a discrete, discrete celled environment, discrete space, which is one of any logic spatial, um, uh, spatial modes um, for building any logic models, uh, for building agent-based models. Um, hopefully that's that's helpful. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I'm, I'll close that out, but some people may find that um, interesting. Oh my gosh, I closed all. So I'm gonna reopen the social tobacco use and I will take this opportunity to post it to the, um, to the um, boot camp site. There we go. Anyone would like it? You can take it. Okay. Um, let's suppose now we were to not send it to all neighbors, but send to one neighbor. What do you think the difference would be? Send to random connected. What do you think the difference would be there? So we send the same message, but we send it to a randomly connected. By the way, that I should have really called this version three before doing that to sort of be proper, but um, I'm gonna say undo, and I'm gonna say undo, come on, boom. Um, okay, um, undo, boom. Okay, well, um, alia acta est. Um, okay, boom. Um, okay, so here we're sending it to a random connected. So that's just one neighbor. If they only send it to one neighbor once a day, like maybe it's the person they're having conversations with uh, as a smoker, then it will take longer to spread. Um, and you know, you may get persistence of never smokers for a considerably longer time. Okay. Um, so that's a bit of social interaction uh, via via networks. Um, uh, You know, uh, one or two more comments on that. Um, so, uh, you know, here we are privileging one type of message. Um, it's a message about initiating smoking. And that's an important one where early in life, uh, vulnerable youth are, are often um, particularly vulnerable to um, social pressures and may engage in, in you know, worrisome health behaviors, um, like starting to smoke. So it's a, of key interest. But, you know, there's the other side, often of the life course as well, where older individuals may, may seek social support for staying quit, or they may be influenced by peers who quit smoking. So suppose we wanted to have influence not only in terms of initiation of smoking, but, but quitting smoking, perhaps relapsing of smoking. How do we do that? Well, one of the realizations here is we'd want to, we'd want to ensure that people's um, interaction came in different sorts. They're, they weren't just influence each other on initiation. Um, some would influence each other on cessation. So maybe when a person ceases, they'll let their neighbors know, and that will inspire some of their friends to cease as well. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, so let's do that with your leave. And we'll now apply ourselves to this task. Who needs help here? Who needs help? Okay. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have cessation also be mediated by influences. Are we ready? Okay, so let's add it. I'm gonna to go to the palette and we're going to add in a transition here. You ready? There we go. And this transition is going to be also a message transition. But we have to be cautious because right now it says unconditional. What do you think would happen if we started to have this? What would happen if we ran this model right now? What thing that is not desirable would happen? What discordant theory would this suggest? What ugly thing this way comes? What's gonna happen? If, if we just did it like this, what would happen? Anyone? What's gonna happen with, with the messages someone says saying, start smoking? 
What are they going to cause people to do? One thing they're going to cause them to do is start smoking. What's the other thing they're going to cause them to do? Quit. Okay. So, so we did that. It would it'd be full of sound and fury, but it would signify nothing, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of meaningless. I'm, I'm tempted to show it. It would probably lead to quite odd dynamics, but with no particular physical meaning to it, right? We do. We basically have people um, uh, engaged in in getting each other to quit. There'd be a lot more quitting going on. There'd be then relapsing after the quitting, um, and uh, it'd be sort of a strange panoply. Again, full sound of fury signifying nothing. So what we need is two different modes of influence, and what we need to realize that at a mechanistic level, ladies and gentlemen, is two different types of messages. And I don't care if you're in any logic or net logo or repast or whatever, you have the same basic idea holds. You need different ways of having different, um, of, of, of influencing each other in different ways. Some may be pro-social ways, some may be you know, inimic ways inimical to health, et cetera. So let's do that. We, we need to distinguish different modes of interaction. And how do we do that? Well, we have a set of possible messages that can be sent, and we're going to choose among them. And how, ladies and gentlemen? How, Craig, tell me, do we have a set of different possibilities, categorical possibilities in any way? We saw it yesterday, not just once, but twice, verily. What was it? An options list. You speak well. So that's exactly it. We, we want an options list of possibilities. And in fact, we already have an option list. Do you remember that? We added it, not one day events, to, to indicate the initial smoking state. Do you remember that? Well, we're going to add another option list, which is going to be um, you know, um, peer influence messages. Some people like to put it like messages like that, um, MSGS. I like to say messages, but um, yeah, okay. Oh, so one message will be start smoking. And one message will be um, quit smoking. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to say start smoking message, um, quit smoking message, but I think I'll leave it like that, or start smoking influence. Um, but I think I'll, I'll just, just treat it like that. By the way, it won't support exclamation points, any of that nice little factors, okay? So this would be the possibility, start smoking, quit smoking. Are we okay with that? Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, so we are going to now, what, how do you think this message, this receipt? So that's gonna change. So first of all, we're going to have this guy here, this gal. This this thing, um, uh, we're going to have that that uh, connection here, internal connection. Instead of saying start smoking, which by the way can easily be misspelled if you put it in capitals versus lowercase, it won't know it's the same thing. You can compare with these, but it's bad. It's bad form because there's no guarantee it's going to be one of the canonical choices. You put it in option list, it's the canonical choices. So I'm going to put here, send to random connection. What are we going to put? What are they going to send? We're going to send them a, yes, yeah, start, start smoking. Boom. That's a message they're going to send them. See that? Just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, just like that. So how did I put this? So we sent them one of those two possible messages. One and done. Clean, simple a thing of beauty, and after that, a reliable joy, if not forever, for a long time. So there we go. See that? Okay. What is this thing in here? 
Where did that come from? Just one sanity check. Yeah. Better answer than full. Yeah, that's right. That's the option, right? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. I, I wish you could, but um, yeah, by the way, I appreciate people um, um, on the, the chat. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not aware of any way to um, to add something underneath a person. Um, I, I don't think there's a way. Can any of the TAs comment on that? Wade? The, the agent, any agent has a section for Oh, you could declare any num. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can do really advanced things if you want to by putting arbitrary code, but generally you stay away from it. And amongst other things for transparency, right? We want someone else to look at it, be able to show them these are the possibilities visually. And if it's in code, you know, you might scare them and they might they might run away. Right. Um so um so yeah. Um okay. So we, we've done half of it, but that's the sending part. What else do we have to change? The receiving part. And where is the receiving part for the start smoking message? Where is it? Yeah, the never to current smoker transition. And now, how do you think I change this? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Yeah, sure. That's right. Okay. Um, and the particular message is going to be what? Start smoking. You got it. There you go. Clean, simple, a thing of beauty. Okay. Um, and now we're going to deal with this message. And what do you think is going to trigger this message that might impel a person, might inspire a person to try quitting smoking? It will be the what? Will be start smoking. Quit smoking. Darn right. You speak with reason. Okay, so that's going to be on the particular message. Quit smoking. You ready? We good? Okay. Question. Um. Yeah, it's um. Oh, um, uh, I mean this thing here. Yeah, so you you can actually. It's a very good question. I, I, um. You 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 can send messages when so when you send a message from one person to another, one agent to another, you can send messages with a certain payload. In other words. Type of thing. Right now, we sent a payload that was one of these two possible messages. But in general, we could send things like an integer or a double. Now, Wade is going to count himself with this more than I. But it's an interesting question, Wade. Could you make this instead of putting message type, or, you know, the message has to be such and such? Could you just make this, um, you know, no, uh, no, no, you, uh, mumble. Um, Okay, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if, if it would benefit from doing this or that, but if that's the only type that circulates for a message, you could probably make a secure influence message and probably fine. But wait, any sage comments? Yeah, it can be an arbitrary gap. Uh -huh. Yeah. But most most people won't ever use advanced descriptive in the receipt, but you could put like in the COVID model, for example, which we have talked about in this session, but, but um, you actually put information in a special Java class that says who sent who sent the exposure, what variant it was, and all this other extra information that goes along with the exposure message. So the first, so the person being exposed and the agent can interrogate that information. Yeah. So that's. That's really, really helpful. Right. So you're packing the payload with a lot more information. But why would you have to? So you, oh, okay. So basically you would indicate this, which would mean then you don't have to 
sorry, I'm going to lapse into, into more lingo. You don't have to downcast it to a, to a, a, to, a to your type of. Uh, right. If you specify yeah. Yeah. A, a specific class, yeah. Yeah. then it knows it it's that. Anything that's not in okay. So it won't even handle it. It won't even know. look at it. Great. Great. Okay. So that's, that's helpful to know. Um, and, and the message, by the way, you notice in this message, this little light bulb says there's this thing called MSG, which is not monosodium it's the message being sent. And you can then use that message and extract valuable information from it. Like, as Wade said, maybe the message being sent says who infected me or who influenced me to become a, a you know, smoker or what have you. Um, where did it take place or whatever? Um, so, um, yeah, so good question, but, um, you can obviously see in, in 20 years of any logic, I haven't, I haven't tapped the potential of that. Okay. Um, any logic is a very general and powerful platform. Um, great question. Uh, any other questions people would like to ask right now? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we need to have a sender for this. And maybe I'll say what will send it is maybe the presence of someone ceasing. So someone successfully ceasing. Um, the fact that your best friends, Sue and, and Mary just quit might inspire you to quit. Um, so I'll, I'm gonna make it the very act of ceasing is going to send a message, okay? And I'm going to send it to this dot send, and we'll do send to all connected and we'll do it to you know uh quit quit smoking there we go um so it's the, the here here it was like periodically while in this thing they 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 sent it because they see them smoking here maybe it's the very act of of ceasing that inspires others hmm? there we go okay there we go. Okay. Um, excellent. Um, okay. So let's. Um, sure. Oh. Um, so all we're doing is we're sending this quit something message. When, when I quit, I tell all my friends, hey, I quit. I'm out of here, you know, no more cancer sick for me. And they um they might be inspired by that to do it as well. To try to quit as well. This is an idea. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um so so let's let's run this thing. Let's see the consequences of this. Okay. Um great. And there we go. And now. We're getting some clusters of smoke. Do you notice what's going on there? It's actually clusters of smokers, which is quite quite interesting, actually. Um, uh, so there's there's clusters of smokers. Now, um, sometimes they clear up together. So so this is really interesting. Like I didn't anticipate this, but look at this. Like because as an emergent property of what we saw, what you actually see is clusters being formed of smokers. So, so it's because if one person quits, the other tend to quit. And so where smokers are concentrated, um, they tend to be concentrated together and then they tend to disappear together. They disappear in pairs or, or, or triplets very quickly because they inspire each other to quit. Um, and so this will have different statistics associated with, you know, if you look at the Framingham Park study about the, the social transmission of smoking, like uh, Christakis and Fowler's work, you know, you might start to explain patterns here with a theory like this about how people influence each other in smoking, right? And all from a, a fairly, fairly tractable model here. Um, but let's let's go further than this. We could obviously take this further. We could deal with relapse. And, um, uh, we could have, for example, 
when someone quits, maybe it resets someone's propensity to relapse. It kind of recalibrates them and makes them less likely to, to relapse soon. Do you want to see that? You want to see how that's done? Okay, this will take about three to five minutes. Okay, so I'll, I'll show. Uh, Yom has a question or comment. Um, yeah, so, so in other words, statistics on the part of a certain network, and are you talking statistics in a general sense or in a built-in any logic sense? So any logic statistics are over the population, but it's quite common that you might report, you know, for different networks in the model, um, certain statistics on that, but you wouldn't use any logics declarative statistics for that. You would, you would just calculate a bit of code. And I can show you how you do that, okay? Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but we're, we're in fact gonna calculate statistics in, in just a minute. Question. This one? This one? Yeah. yeah. It's this one here. Cessation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, people said they'd like to see maybe someone, a friend quitting resets a person's propensity to relapse. So it kind of um, throws them back into sort of reconsidering relapsing and, and gives them new inspiration. One way to do that would be to do this. Um, and again, I told you there's different semantics for a, for a um, transition that stays in versus comes in and, and comes out. So here, it would sort of take them out and come back in and, and that will recalculate how soon they'll be relapsing basically. Um, and, um, and so they'll sort of reconsider um, uh, they were counting down to sort of their time to relapse, and now you've, you've sort of reconsidered that. Um, so we could have this be a message transition, and it'll be on a particular message, and it will be on the quit smoking message. By the way, I'm going to post this model um, post haste, okay? Uh, quit smoking. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we had this, mind you, it should be pitched up green, green, and I can sort of pull this around. I can add more if I want to make it fancier looking, et cetera. So these state charts are not just eye candy. They're really useful for communicating to people. And, and I think it's actually a very important feature that Enlogic has long prioritized this for as long as I've been using it. Who needs help though here? Okay, so we've added that into our theory, and um, now we're we're getting people to sort of reconsider how soon they'll relapse or re be reset in their in their determination to not relapse. You can actually see quite a few more sort of former smokers here, um, which is which is interesting, um, and. Uh, but you do see this kind of clustering here and it sort of converts over to former smokers quickly and it tends to be more stable, I think now. Anyway, okay. So I'm gonna post that now, if I, if I may. And, um, oh, did I, maybe I just closed it. Um, so I will fire that up again, but meanwhile, I, I will go post it. Okay. Um, so, any logic? Boom. Boom. Okay. So I'll go post this. Boom. Okay. And we want this one. Okay. Great. Okay. But folks, we have more, more things. Uh, we have a, a more a query, you know, an a important query, query to pursue yet. We're going to add in support for reporting to this model. We want observation processes that will report the number of people in different states. 
uh, we want observation processes that will report um, the number of times that that someone has fallen back into smoking um, or report pack years in the population. That'll be interesting, the number of pack years. Yeah, uh, so Eric and then Louisa, yeah. There's a request, can you explain uh, what sending out quit smoking by former smokers and former smokers got? Um, sorry, uh, yeah, so, so, so there's no sending by a former smoker to a former smoker. So, so to be clear here, when someone quits smoking, when they make this transition from a current smoker to a former smoker, in other words, in the act of quitting, they send out a message. Um, I'm sorry, this, this act is motivated by that, but in the act of quitting here, um, they send out a message saying, hey, you should consider quitting smoking. This is influenced, if, if a current smoker receives that, they may be influenced and inspired in a way that becomes a former smoker. But this one here, they're not sending a message. They are being reset in their expectations about when to relapse by coming out and going back in. If they come out and go back in here, basically um, it will draw a new timing for them to relapse. They'll sort of reconsider how soon they're gonna relapse. And so I, I represented it like that. Now we could have added to the time until they relapse in a certain way, but um, uh, that, that would take a little bit more mechanism, but it could be readily done. It's, it's, not, it's not hard to do. And I know how to do that uh, quite readily, but right now they sort of reconsider how soon they will relapse by leaving and coming back in, because when you leave a state and come back in, it calculates the timing until this is this will occur. I don't know if that's helpful. Okay, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to take a break for ten minutes because we've been going full steam since uh, lunch. And if people want to take a health break here, and um, uh, and then we'll um, uh, we'll. So to reconvene and, and add in these additional features, which will illustrate the collection of longitudinal information on a person over time. Okay, um, it'll also illustrate how to report on information across the model over time. Okay, so so let's do this. Ready? And we'll we'll stop sharing, and we'll be back in ten minutes. And I'll pause the. Recording.